Long ago, two races ruled over Earth, humans and monsters. One day, war broke out between the two races. After a long battle, the humans were victorious. They sealed the monsters underground with a magic spell. Throughout the years, many humans climbed Mount Ebut. And they all met the same fate. Except for one. One human named Frisk befriended the entire underground. In the end, the barrier was destroyed and all monsters were freed. It seemed like a new beginning for the future of humans and monsters. But little did Frisk know that yet another journey lied ahead. There's still someone else who has yet to be freed from their suffering. I tell you their name, but I don't think I should. After all, it's rude to talk about someone who's listening. Ooh, <laughs> that's ominous. Ooh, that's really good. That's really spooky. Don't forget. Well, hello, guys. This is the Dan Tuga coming at you again with a brand new video for a fan made sequel to Undertale called Don't Forget. And I probably won't because I'm already getting into this. Alright, so this looks really interesting. I saw it on GameJolt.com, and uh, all I really needed to see was that it was a fan made sequel to Undertale. And I'm like, okay, I'm in. Let's see what it is. Ooh. Begin the game. A few seconds after the end of Undertale. Oh my gosh! Come along, Frisk. I'm so excited to finally be on the surface. It's been so long. Well, anyway, the others should be up ahead. Let's go. And then I can just, like, walk around? Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay. Man, this game is already very remiss in the original. Warning. Do not go past this point. The cave up ahead to the right is dangerous. If you pass, we are not responsible for death. If you die, then you will have no one to blame but yourself. Although you technically wouldn't be able to blame anyone because you'd be dead. Anyway, turn back now. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's fantastic. Ah, the short level design is just like the original. Oh, what's this got to say? Warning. Do not climb the mountain past this point. Thanks, Mountain Climbers Association. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's all my friends! Ah, oh, here you are. We've been waiting. Ahead of us lies a human village. Frisk, are you ready to introduce us to the humans? You are wonderful! Let's hope they like us. Maybe it'll help if I tell some of them some of my amazing jokes. Uh, maybe it will. Be best if we keep our jokes to ourselves. Alright, everyone. It's finally time. Let us enter the village. Try to make a good first impression. This is very important. Off we go. Two years later. Oh, oh, I, I was right. <laughs> uh, well, not with the two years thing, but that was gonna cut to it. Cut to the future. Okay. Feeling the warmth of your small, cozy room, it fills you with comfort. Oh, and determination too. Your file has been saved. You open the closet. 
It's full of striped shirts. Oh, that's just my thing. Lamp? What's it? It's a convenient lamp. This is Toriel's room. This room doesn't belong to anyone yet. However, it might be Asgore's if he manages to get back with Toriel. Currently, he's living on Undyne's couch until he sorts everything out. That's kind of strange. So he'd move back in, but they still have separate rooms? Ah, oh, good morning, my child. Good morning. I hope you slept well. It's a beautiful day outside. You should really go out and play. It's so beautiful. Have fun. Oh, I will. I will go, Bob. I will. There's chocolate in the fridge. Ooh. Did I relocate to Springfield? Where everybody has yellow skin? Ooh. Did we all like move in next to each other? I can't probably should have read that. The door is locked. You hear spooky tunes coming from the inside. I'm just, I don't want to seem like I'm in a hurry, but I'm just like, I just want to explore, like, everything, like, ASAP. The door is locked. A YouTuber lives here. Their name is Pat Matt, or something like that. Oh. Oh. Little game theory reference. Happy Cropes. Ribbit. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. What's this? This is Sans and Papyrus' house. It's locked, however. There is a note on the door which says, At lab, be back later. The note is written awfully, so it's definitely by Sans. Should you go check on him at his secret lab? This will progress the game and you will not be able to go back. Oh, let's not, let's not go yet. I, I still want to explore. Grillbees is up on the surface now. Oh my gosh. It's all my friends. I... I'm still thinking about getting a spiked collar. Be careful, kid. That big guy will still try to sit in your lap. And give you a what? Oh, lots of love and attention. Hi. <laughs> Hiya. I'm Sam. Septic Sam. I'm a giant eyeball. I can't blink, so I'm constantly in pain. It burns. Oh no. The door is locked. An indie. Let's say an indie developer. Yeah, an indie dev lives here. Ricky. Gicky R. That's, that must be a play a play on the developer for this. That's awesome. The door is locked. You hear some funky music and someone saying, Oh yes, on the other side. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. The door is locked. You hear someone watching an anime on the other side. Oh, I know who's in there. I think I have a good guess. Door is locked. You hear someone shout, Nyah! on the other side. What's over here? Is this back where I came from? Hi. Great. What are your deal? Fit. Not only are puzzles getting worse, video games are too. There are less original games out there. Just about to poorly made fan games. <laughs> They're literally just copying the other games. What a disgrace. Good thing we're not in a stinking fan game. Sheesh. If we were, I'd really lose hope for this world. <laughs> I heard some weird people are running for president. One of them wants all the monsters to wear specific tags or something. But why? To make us different? Aren't we different enough? We're monsters! Sigh. That's politics! Business is booming here on the beach! I'm so happy! Papyrus! Oh, hello, Chris!
Christmas? Isn't it a lovely day outside? I just love the surface, it's beautiful! I'm currently enjoying this dazzling view! If you're looking for Sans, I have no idea where he is whatsoever! Check the door to our house, he might have left a note! Also, if you see him, remind him to clean off... to clean the sh snow off the roof! I told him to do that months ago! See you later, Frisk! <laughs> There's no snow on the roof. We're in the tropics now. The goofy gooper, gooby gooper. Alrighty, so I think this is pretty much everything. So I'm gonna go check on that note. Let's see, it was the third house I think that had the notes. Must be the fourth one. Oh, it's definitely past the frog guy. Here we go. It says at lab, be back later. Definitely stands. Yes, you decide to go to the lab. No one knows about it but you and Sands. It's around the back. Who's there? Oh, it's just you. Hey, kiddo. Sorry, I uh, wasn't actually expecting anybody to come in since, well, nobody decided you and me know this place lab exists. I would have thought if somebody came by, they'd read the note, but not know where the lab is, so they just come back later. I forgot that you knew, though, actually, so, uh, say, you're probably wondering what the heck this thing is behind me. Well, no, Frisk, we've been through a lot, haven't we? You're the reason we're all here on the surface, and you're one of my closest friends. I'm pretty sure I can trust you, can't I? Look, uh, I know this is out of the blue and all, but maybe it's time I told you something. I've never talked about this to anyone before, not even Papyrus. I think it's time I told you the truth, kiddo. Promise me you won't tell anyone else, though, alright? Alright? Well, it's getting harder and harder to remember now, but I used to be a lab assistant. I worked for the old royal scientist. His name was... Oh, God, Gaster. Oh, fuck. Uh, uh, is this game gonna be about Gaster? Why is everything about Gaster? Uh, okay. All right. Well, maybe this will at least give some fan-made story to him to where I could actually maybe get behind get behind all the hype about Gaster. Like, like for those of you who don't know, every time Gaster comes up, and he seems to manage to sneak into every single thing that Undertale has, and it's just, he's like not even in the game, and I just, it bothers me how much people obsess over Gaster instead of all the things that are actually in the game that are worth obsessing over and then there's this, this there's this, all this obsession over Gaster and he's like not even a thing he's not even in the game he's just some leftover junk uh, okay well anyway that's my problem with Gaster so we'll see uh, we'll see if this game uh, is this game gonna be about Gaster? Okay, I'll, I'll try. I'll try to get into it, viewers. I promise. I promise. I promise. I will try to give this a fair chance. Okay. All right. His name was W. T. Gaster. He was a great guy. One day, though, he discovered the most powerful thing in the universe: determination. He then built this machine that's behind me, which is powered by determination. It's sort of a time machine, except. Instead, except instead of going to different times, you go to different timelines. Okay, so this is going to offer an explanation for like how he knows about the different timelines. However, it can also be used to bring things back from other timelines. For example, a person. Anyway, Gaster was a pretty curious guy. He had to test everything. So he gave himself a bit of determination. 
he even gave me a small bit too. And he started jumping from one timeline to another using this machine. It was fine at first, until one day, Gaster thought to himself, what would happen if he started killing monsters in other timelines? How would it affect other timelines? And of course, he just had to try it. I tried to warn him that the more you kill, the more you distance yourself. But he didn't listen. He really wanted to find out what would happen. Soon, he started going through different timelines, killing innocent people. His reasoning was, it's not our timeline, so it doesn't matter. But over time, he started to become less sympathetic. He started to distance himself. Then, one afternoon, he wanted to go full genocide on another timeline. I had to stop him, it was going too far. I, uh, I think I remember now. <laughs> Caster in the little suit. <laughs> Come on, G, this is stupid and you know it. You can't just go through some random timeline and kill everyone in it. That's crazy. Now step away from that machine, please. Man, what voice do I do for Gaster? I don't know. Um. No, Sans, I will not. I must do this for the sake of science! Besides, it won't affect us, will it? It only affects the other timelines! I must find out what happens. Besides, I would never harm anyone in our own timeline. No one! Sans, don't you trust me? Don't you trust me? Nah, I couldn't. He wasn't the same guy I used to know. No way could I trust him. Hopefully, when I bring him back, he won't hate me. Huh? Why would he be mad at me? Oh well, uh, the thing is, after I tried to stop him, after I tried to stop him, Gaster had activated his machine. Just when he was about to take him to another timeline, I quickly used one of my attacks to destroy the machine. This caused the whole thing to go horribly, horribly wrong, and Gaster became corrupted. The timeline fell apart. Due to this, a new timeline was created where... Oh, well, Gaster didn't really exist. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of, that's kind of an interesting take on it. Okay. Uh huh. And then, yeah, from the gate. Yeah. So this this new timeline ended up being the one we're currently in. So it's it's the it's the one from the from the Undertale, from the the real one. Okay. Gaster was stuck in the old timeline, which I can only guess is an empty void now. So basically, I'm the reason he's trapped in the dark void. I wouldn't be surprised if he hated me, but maybe he's had a lot of time to think and he's calmed down. Anyway, with this machine behind me, we could attempt to bring him back. I've tried to fix this thing so many times though, too many times to count, but I've got a good feeling about this attempt. Do you want to try it out with me? Alright then, you might want to stay back though, sigh. Alrighty then. Let's have a dramatic countdown. Three, two, one. Nothing happened. Don't tell me it's still not fixed. I worked so hard on it. So hard this time. I didn't even fall asleep. Come on, work. I guess it ain't. That was probably a very bad thing. Oh. Ring, ring. Uh, hello? Risk, are you alright, kiddo? Where are you? Are you safe? The machine sent me to some weird, dark version of Snowden. I don't see you anywhere. Around, though. Must have separated us. Gee, that's strange. It's a good thing I remembered to charge my phone. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, the machine is actually right here next to me, but uh, there's a bit of a problem. I think the machine is uh, well broken, uh, and I I can't fix it. But now that I think about it, this place seems like the void, and if that's correct, the investor has to be around here somewhere. Maybe if he isn't too mad, maybe we can ask him to help fix it. 
he was the one who built the machine after all. You know, I'm really confused as to why the machine separated us. I have no idea why that happened. But, uh, anyway, I need to look after the Alpha Gaster. You probably should try to look around too. But be careful, alright? Doesn't look really friendly around here. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. You're one of my best pals, Frisk. Well, anyway, I might call you again in a bit, so listen out for your phone, okay? Alright, talk to you soon. Click.